Ariel Hawani for MMARated.com being joined by Joe Diesel Riggs, who tomorrow night at the Playboy Mansion is facing Kazuo Masaki in the main event of the Strike Force show. Joe, how are you doing today? Good, good. Just waiting to weigh in, doing good. MMA fans are very excited to see you back in action. I was actually sitting right next to you when the California State Athletic Commission gave you the bad news a couple of months ago that you weren't going to be able to fight on that card. Um, how anxious are you to finally get back in action? Last time we saw you compete was in February. Uh, very anxious. I can't wait to get back in there. And um, I'm a little nervous. You know, they still got a, a box commission still trying to make a jump through hoops. So I'm a little nervous. I mean, I'm, they said I'm going to get to fight, but I'm, you know, it's, and, until I weigh in and everything's good, I'm, I'm not going to feel like I can't breathe. So can't wait to get in there, man. I hope, I just hope to God everything goes well. I just can't wait to get in there and fight. Still giving you problems. You have no idea. That made me go through a hundred different, I mean, unbelievable like, stuff that, that no one needs to go through. They're just trying to give me a hard time, but. So is it just because of you? I mean, this is yeah. not what all the other fighters have to no, go through? No, they made me go through a complete different thing just because last time I exposed the uh, medication I was taking. And uh, it said it wasn't going to be my system, but, you know, just said just in case. And they, I didn't test positive for anything. And so they said I couldn't fight last time. This time they want my doctor to write prescriptions, like prescription things that I had, and, and uh, another release my back, and uh, two different doctors from just, just, you know, a plethora of things that's trying to make my life difficult. You fought all over the place. Is dealing with the California State Athletic Commission the most difficult one, um, you know, leading up to a fight? By far. I'm not even, not even close in the other state. I mean, California Athletic Commission, there's sticklers. I mean, I don't, you know, I, think, I mean, they're just, they find something to, you know, to, to harp on, they do it. You know, I mean, I, I mean I'm sure they, they have their reasons for it, but I don't see it. You know, it's, it's, it just makes life hard. Like last time, you know, for a lot of money, I have a family to take care of, and you saw how upset I was, and they just didn't give a shit, so... Didn't turn out good, so I just pray to God everything goes good today. All right, and uh, tomorrow night you're facing Kazuo Masaki, who is a tough opponent, a very game opponent. Uh, been fighting all over the world as well. Uh, what are you expecting to see from him at the Playboy Mansion? Uh, you know, he's a counterfighter. He likes to back up. He's elusive, kind of like Machida. But uh, you know, I'm just going to come forward and throw punches. And I think he's a tough guy. You know, he's a very tough guy, good fighter. I just uh, I look forward to a good fight. I know it's going to be a tough fight. I can't wait. Any jitters fighting in a venue like that? No, I mean, I've fought everywhere. I've main evented UFC cards. You know, been at the been at the highest thing, highest level of sport, and uh, just know the fight. Feel good. How's the back feeling? Great, back's hundred percent. Hundred percent. All right, I, I want to quickly ask you a question. There was an article written about you uh, this week, I believe, MMAweekly.com, talking about a, a a fight that never happened that uh, raised a lot of eyebrows. You and Kimbo Slice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For those that don't know, what exactly went down with the proposed matchup between you and Kimbo? Um, I think it was like back in '03. Uh, you know, back when he was everybody was you know looking at his fights on the internet and stuff. And they were taking all comers. Like, you know, you put a $50,000, they would, and, you know, winner takes the pot. And uh, I was training with Arizona Combat Sports back then, and uh, my trainer, Trevor Lolly, you know, he's an independent, wealthy guy. So he, so he said, hey, I'll put up $50,000. I'll go down there and wax that bum and, you know, take the money. And so I made a couple calls, and, and uh, we were going to do it, but they wanted, to, they, uh, they wanted to hold on to the money, and we could, only could bring me and Trevor when they have, like, 100 guys in there. And still, we still were going to do it, but they found out we had some uh, – I had a lot of pro experience, and they declined. So – Wish I would have done that, you know, to knock all this Kimbo bullshit out and just, uh, I, I wouldn't, none of all this stuff would have been happening. I would have nixed it a long time ago, but. You could have stopped it before it ever started. Did yeah, yeah, I rubbed him out, you know, and had a had videotape to prove it, rubbed him out in front of everyone and made him look foolish. I mean, and then none of this would be happening, you know. You wouldn't, you wouldn't see some, some big, big black guy with a cul-de-sac on his head, you know, coming there, to, coming there and everybody's wanting to see a fight. You wouldn't see it, but, you know, but, you know I guess, I guess uh, things happen for a reason. You take offense to all the fame that he's receiving and all the accolades and all that, and really being put in the spotlight as uh, you know one of the big stars of an MMA. Yeah, I do, I do. I mean, same thing with Brock Lesnar. You know, I mean, I, I think they're both. You know, Brock's you know a collegiate level wrestler is very tough. You know, he's a national champion, but you know, once again, he's got a tight UFC title shot when he's two and one. You know, that, that doesn't sit well with me. And then Kimbo, you know, I don't know if he's like three and zero, four and zero. I mean, I don't know what his record is, but yeah, man, they're making. Way more money than guys like myself, and I've had like 50 fights, and they've never beat anybody, and never done anything in the sport, and and uh, you know they're getting all this all this money, all this fame. Yeah, it doesn't sit well with me. It's not right, you know. And especially, you know, I mean, Brock can at least fight. He's a game guy. He's gonna be a tough fight for Andy, but Kimbo, you know, I mean, like like that that big fight when it was live on NBC or CBS, and he had all those viewers, and everybody in the country fought. This is what mixed martial arts about. You see those two whales beat each other's ears up, and like, oh, that's what the sport has progressed from from like '93 to that. And, you know, then, I mean, it's not that, you know, you, then you see a fight like, you know, Scott Smith versus Robbie Lawler, that's how beautiful the sport is, not Kimbo's bald ass, you know, beating the guy's ear up, you know, it's not that. So, yeah, I mean, you know, he, he's, he's entitled, he's done well, you know, I mean, obviously not, not blaming him, you know, he's just taking the money where it's given to him, but, 
Yeah, it's, it's definitely not right. It's almost the opposite of boxing, where in boxing, you know, you have 50 fights, that's when you're going to start getting paid, and the guys who are, you know, 3-0 and will never get a big opportunity like that. Do you think that the sport will ever kind of rectify itself, or are we always going to be sort of drawn to, for lack of a better term, the freak show bouts, you know what I mean? I think, I mean, everybody likes the heavyweights, and everybody likes the freak show, I mean, so... I, I think a guy has a certain level of fighting style and a, and a certain level of charisma. You know, I think I think they're prone to get more attention. But I hope so. I hope I, the guys that put in the work and, and pay their dues, you know, get top billing over over turds with a big punch and a bald spot. You know, I th- hope they. Uh, That's great. <laughs> hope they. I uh, hope hope they hope they do rectify that. But you know, until that happens, we're just going to be forced to watch Kimbo beat guys call flower years up. But hey, what am I going to do about it? You happy in Strike Force? You think that there, you know, if you beat Masaki, maybe you get a shot against Kung Lee uh, somewhere down the line. Do you think that there's enough enough game opponents for you in this organization? Yeah, go on. Strike Force is a very deep middleweight division. Um, yeah, I'm very happy with Strike Force, and and uh, I'm look forward to you know a lot of fights with him. And and yeah, Kung Lee, anybody. I take all comers. So after after Masaki, I, I plan to go down to 170, but I'm always entertaining different offers. So all comers, man. Who's ready? I'm ready. I have my hands up. Let's go. Kimbo Slice, if they offer you that, would you take it? Dude, in a second, I'd kick that guy's fucking tits off. I'd, in a second, I'd love to rub him out, man. That'd be, that'd be great. I'd, but yeah, I would love. I would take that guy. I would weigh in at 170 and, and and rub that turd out. You know, the guy has no wrestling, nothing like that. But you're getting me all riled up here. I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm trying to get you ready for the fight. You know, I'm trying to get you pumped up. I know, I know. Yeah, but yeah, of course, man. Anybody, Kimbo, anybody. All right, well, all you got to do is say to this guy, Kimbo Slice, and he'll be, uh, he's got his game face on. But tomorrow night, it's not Kimbo Slice, it's Kazuo Masaki who will be facing him in the cage at the Playboy Mansion. Best of luck to you, Joe, and uh, we're very excited to see you back in action. Thanks a lot.